Everybody, give me one second here. I don't know where that's coming from. Huh? All right. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Oh, today we're going to be drawing some owls and I've picked a couple that I've kind of doodled out here that we might be going through. So I've got this cool guy. He's a horned owl and then we've got a barn owl, which they're kind of my favorite. Um, this one will be a little more detail because there's a lot more to these guys in the images that I chose to draw, but we should be able to get through them together pretty easily. Um, but I am going to start maybe with the barn owl because he'll be a good kind of start and a good way to get into it without being too, too concerned about some certain things that we've got going on with the other guy. Uh, I love owls. I know that everybody chose owls for this one, so I'm pretty, pretty glad that people interacted with my website. We're going to do another um, choice poll for the next drawing class, um, and I'll 
let you know what those are at the end of the class so that you can kind of decide what you want to do there. But we can get started with this guy. So with owls, there's actually kind of a funny little shape that's kind of consistent with when they're sitting down. And you can notice if you turn him upside down, he's kind of a really long kind of droplet or tear shape. And it's the same sort of this guy, but it's kind of when he's at that angle, you can see it's kind of tilted. So if I do that, you kind of see that teardrop shape. So what I'm going to do when I first start is I'm going to draw a circle where the head's going to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be as round as this anyway when we're done with it. So we're going to start there. Super simple, super easy. And then I'm going to go ahead and make that same sort of shape that this owl is. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the top of the head where this circle is. And I'm going to go all the way to here and then kind of have a little bit more of a cut off there. And then I'm going to take this part and just pull it down. So you're kind of seeing that shape already starting. Right? And then I'm going to go with this part, which is the front of my owl. And bring it kind of down in. A little bit of a bump there because you can kind of see where that is pointing at this, but you can't see it. But <laughs> um, So right here, when you're looking at this part, that's what we're kind of at right now. So I'm going to kind of just drag that down a bit. And for those of you who don't want to do this right away, that's okay. You can literally go ahead and pull down the shape to the bottom and pull this one into it. So you get that kind of diagonal shape, right? So it's pretty easy to get to that point. And you can kind of see when you draw your, your owls, by the way, they're all going to be different. It's not, not all of them are going to look exactly the same when you start. But you can kind of see where the angles are that I'm putting here, where they equate to, you know, this area and the front here, where that's going to be. That's kind of what we're working with to start. So for this circular part, just to give myself a little more perspective, when I'm doing owls, I like to kind of move forward in certain areas and others. It's like when people want to draw eyes or, or face features before they finish drawing the rest of the body. Or, you know, how you know if you, um, you draw a person's face and you draw one side and then it's super hard to draw the other side. We're going to just work really slowly, big shapes to the smallest shapes. And we're still going to fill in the parts that kind of give us that the little, little twinkle of happiness there when you're drawing. So... I'm going to take this and I'm going to look at this shape here, where it's kind of like a really oddly shaped heart, if you can kind of tell. So I'm going to use the edge of this circle that we have, and then I'm going to take it and pull it around like that. And that's going to be my first part. Make sure it's not too far over because you don't want this heart to be perfect. As you can see, it's kind of oddly positioned. If you imagine your heart and it turned to the side of it, that's kind of what you're looking to do. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to take this part. I'm going to pull it down a little bit more past this one, because if you look here, these ones go into this part, which leads to the nose, and that's kind of an easy way for me to figure out where that's going to be. So I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to pull this over and drop it down a little bit. And then you can kind of see it's, it's going up and then down a little, instead of fully around and then kind of like a full heart would look like. And then I'm going to pull it down to the bottom. And the bottom's going to be a little flatter and it's not going to be very far down. So I'm going to do it to about there, which will be kind of the upper portion of this area that you've already got going on. So you can see the upper portion will be, you know, about there. So we're going to pull it to right there. And then we're going to let it come back up, slightly angled, reaching the other side. And that's where you can kind of see where that kind of heart part comes in. If anybody has trouble with it, just let me know. I will slow down and go back. Or if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them as we go along. But yeah, that's the start. We've got the heart, which makes the face, and we've got the upside down sort of teardrop look that makes the body. As long as we also have the other parts of the shape that make this owl. So if you can see in this owl, we're gonna fix a couple of things up here so that it doesn't look so dull. And we're going to bring it up from the side where the side of the face is. I'm going to pull this down to follow that line. And I'm going to bring it into the rest of that body and erase that one inner line. 
So then you get this nice straight kind of line going into where the face is, and then the top of the head's gonna come out around here. So you're giving it a little more poof. <laughs> so after I do that, I'm gonna pull it across a little straighter this time because the top of the head's a little flat there. And then it's gonna go into that diagonal part, which reaches that straight down area, right? So you can see these new lines that I've made. I'll darken them a little bit. So it turns our teardrop into a little more of an angled thing. And that's because when you're looking at owls from different angles, you'll notice their feathers kind of go everywhere. Um, one of the main things because they have beaks and because the beaks are fairly close to their face, um, a lot of owls have feathers going in this way that push up against each other and then feathers that come out this way and then follow around the eyes. And then the rest of their feathers do the same sort of thing that most other animals that I've shown you do is that anything comes away from the center of the face and back towards their tail area or just back farther going down towards gravity as the fur gets longer. So nice thing about these guys, barn owls are very kind of smooth. Most owls are. Their wing structure is actually pretty amazing. It's why they're so quiet, why they're really good hunters. Um, you know, they eat close to about a thousand mice a year, so they're really helpful. Um, that's why they tell you not to, you know, use rat poison or mice poison around your house um, when you have rat issues um, because sometimes rats will get out and an owl will go and eat them and it'll get whatever poison it ingested from the rat. Um, so, you know, different types of traps if you're looking for helping with that sort of thing, just make sure you know what you're doing there. Um, but yeah, so we have a lot of different types of owls in our area, which is pretty cool. And that's why I like drawing them so much. Um, yeah, we actually have one outside our house that, that tends to come every couple weeks and sit on top of our light post. But we have a chihuahua, so we're kind of scared. <laughs> All right, so we're at that point. We've got this. I'm done blabbering uh, for that part anyway. So I'm going to bring down this line in the center of the face, and I'm going to let it sit at its angle. But if you can look at this one, you notice that the beak is just a little bit above the bottom of that heart shape. So I'm going to put it about there. So if you want to put a dot there to remember where that beak is, that's perfectly all right. Because the next part we're going to do, this is going to come down to it just a little bit past where this angle starts. So it's a good portion down. If I were to go and look at this and go like that, it's probably where I'd want to be. Right? So then I'm going to pull, as you can see with this guy here, he's got these two lines, right? So it's almost like an upside down Y, right? So I'm pulling it that way, pulling it this way. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's where we're going to go with it. And then this line is going to connect into where the beak should be, and that's going to touch where that line was that we put, that little dot. Good thing for that, because with this guy, all you have to do is bring it back up into the rest of that Y shape, and there's your beak. If you don't like how it looks or how it's shaped, you can always widen the Y and kind of fix it. Um, if you look at owls, they have very kind of downward facing beaks, not like eagles or things like that, that have them go on like straight out. These ones go down, they're more flat. It's kind of, to me, why they're a little more creepy. If you've never seen a baby owl sleeping, it's hilarious because they sleep on their face because their heads are too heavy for their bodies. <laughs> um, so they, they just look so strange. So if you've never seen it, I suggest you find a way to because it's amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're here. We're doing that. And these little fluffy death machines have fur coming up this way because, like I mentioned, fur comes away from the eyes and follows outward to the body. The only parts that are kind of strange is when they push into the nose area, much like what this line really is, right? So what that is is all the fur coming out and away from the face, pushing into the nose. So the next part that we're going to do is we're going to draw the eyes. And you've got this nice line here, which I'm going to bring down past the beak a little bit, just to kind of give it that shape and make it look like there's kind of some fur there. Changes it completely, right? So yeah, I'll do that. And then best part is that the top of the beak area is going to be pretty close to where the start of the other eye is. So if I draw a line like this, you can see 
it goes right to the center of that eye. So if I do this and make kind of an almond shape that's kind of diagonally up, make it a little more round just because you can give yourself a little more room to play when you're doing it. And that's kind of what you're going to start with. That's how that other side of the eye is going to look, right? Because if it's at that angle, you're not going to see the full shape of the eye. Usually when you're looking at owls from head on, you notice their eyes are really round um, and kind of creepishly large, right? So this, when it's at that angle, you see this kind of sly look in their eye and it's kind of one of my favorite things about it. But yeah, so once we've got that, we can always determine where the other eye goes now. So if I'm looking here and there's gonna be a little bit of fur coming up, or not fur, feathers, excuse me, coming up, that's where this is gonna kind of show. So I'm gonna do that and add that little line just going up a bit from that eye. I'm not going to worry too much about what's inside the eye because it's going to be shaded in, you know, with the graphite. So it's going to be darker, obviously. You're not going to see whatever's in there. But just make sure that shape is there, almost like an almond sitting there. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of just mess around a little bit with that there. We're going to fix that a little bit later and make sure it's not so. You just want to make it sure it's kind of just outwardly rounded a bit, just so it doesn't look too straight. Um, when you have a line that looks too straight and it's the only straight line in your drawing, it's probably going to look a little strange. Um, an owl's not very straight. <laughs> um, so here's the next part. We're going to look at this. And if you look at this owl here, you will see that if I put my finger like this, that distance between each end of the eye is going to be pretty similar to the distance between that end of the eye. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to move it from the center. It's going to be the same distance as the eye is wide. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that. It's going to be about here. If you don't really want to do it that way, you can always look at... Um, where the side of this feathery bit goes, it goes straight up to where the eye is. So you can look at it that way. If you're having trouble doing the measuring bit, you literally can just draw a line up like that. And that's where you can sort of start your circle for the eye. And remember, if you see the owl's full eye, then it's pretty round. And we're gonna fix it because it's not gonna be completely round when we finish but we're going to fix that in a second once I get rid of this line. So I've gotten rid of that line and you're left with that kind of circle, right? And you notice if you think it's too close, you can change it. Like for me, I think it should be a little bit over. But use that line as a kind of guide to help you if you, if you can't really get the other part. If you're looking at the heart and this part's too angled, go ahead and draw a line down a bit and just draw it out. And you see how it changes the face to fit how your eye structure is? That's totally fine. I've kind of drawn this a little too heart-shaped, it seems, which is fine. So I'm going to just fix it. And like I say all the time, when you're drawing, it's like molding things, right? It's like clay. You never have to feel bad about a drawing or a mark you make. It's, you know, either a learning curve or, you know, you're just trying to figure it out, right? So, if you can see here, I've got this sort of feathery line that we kind of did earlier to know where the eye was. I'm going to just really lightly put that in there. Because I don't want to make it too, too much of a, of a thing. And I want it to kind of eke into the side of where that eye is. So, don't make it as dark as I did. I'm just trying to make sure you guys can see it. Um, and then on the other side, you can also kind of mess around where those feathers go to. And you see, it's starting to look a little more like something, right? It's starting to give it a little more, a little more consistency, a little more drawing-y. <laughs> so I'm gonna just kind of fix this eye a little bit. You'll notice there's a light at the top of the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line there and maybe draw a line over here to just make sure, maybe not like that, that's totally wrong. Um, <laughs> But you want to just make sure that they kind of match where the, the light's coming from. So if there's light coming from this section, like if you look at me, all the light's fading this way and you can see the darkness on the side of my face. 
you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at things that are, you know, round and have lights to it. So if you look at my little vector guy here, you can see that the light's hitting the top corner of my little robot. That's kind of the same thing that'll happen to the glossy, glassy eye bit, right? So you can draw the circle where you think that glass is going to be, that glassiness. Um, but don't draw it really dark because you don't want to see that ring when you finish coloring it in. Um, just because we're doodling these today, we're learning to draw them. I drew them a little darker because you're not going to see them as much, right? So I'm going to darken the outside of this eye first. And I'm going to kind of give it a little bit more angles to it because there's going to be feathers around there, right? So it might not be exactly perfectly round. So I'll do that. And then I'm just going to lightly go in and shade up until that light part. And you can see it gave it this really great kind of depth, right? Really starting to figure out what's happening with them. Again, I, I always mess with my drawings and make sure when I see something I don't like, I change it. If it doesn't work out for you, the best part is you can just go back to what you had before. But yeah, so we're about there right now. If anybody needs me to slow down, just let me know. I will slow her right down. But I think we're doing pretty good so far. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and color in this eye. And like I said, it's going to be just angled. I'm going to flatten it out a tiny bit because it looks like it kind of goes in and then feathers kind of pop out and then I'm going to shade in the edge up here because it looks like there's some shading near the eye the other thing too is there'll probably be a secondary set of feathers coming down the face about here right because there's lots of feathers on barn owls faces you'll notice too if you're feeling like getting a little detailed I'm going to just make a little squiggly marks around the edges because they always have those darker feathers around the edge of their face. So you can either do, you know, little squiggly marks or you can do like really edgy W's and stuff or U's shapes. Like you can do that kind of thing. But I'm going to just sort of squiggle my lines in there because I'm not going to worry too much about what what time I have for this guy. And then if you're feeling a little more fancy also, you can shade in a little bit of that beak, not too much because you don't want it to get lost in the, in the shading. Yeah. All right, so when you're looking at owls, their faces have short little feathers. Lots of times they'll have like tiny little dots everywhere because they're beautiful birds. They have lots of, you know, browns and kind of orangey browns to them, yellowy colors, almost like yellow ochres. Um, and then they have those creams and those whites that are into their fur. So they're, they're gorgeous birds. And then some of them are just yellowy white, which is kind of cool. Um, never seen one up close. Will eventually one day, I hope so. But yeah, so where are we? I'm going to just, I like how this works on this guy, so I'm going to just continue with those lines. I noticed that his feathers, this will be kind of his back area. This is why he's leaned that way. So if you see, this part's going to be hunched a little bit. So I'm going to just create that sort of back part. Right? And you see how much it's shaping him just by changing the smallest lines, right? Perfect. So, I'm going to continue with that. And then I noticed that he's got some, some feathery bits here. And then it goes over a bit and down. And that's because all of his feathers are starting to collide into the center of his back. So when a bird puts his feathers back on the back edge when it's sitting on things, um, their feathers start to crisscross with each other, right? Get one over top of the other or one wing over top of the other, however, it, you know, tends to be. Um, and that's why there's always some sort of like indent or 
or something going along that area, but you'll see large chunks of feather that are overlapping each other. All right, so I'm just going to draw some lines. And right now I'm not going to worry about exacts for feathering because there's like exact numbers of feathers that birds have. Um, and we're just drawing today that could take a whole other, you know, how we're just discussing what kind of feathers and how many and patterns, things like that. So I'm just going to work really slowly and kind of decide on what kind of feathers I want to put in these places. I do know that the shorter feathers are going to sit on the top like this. And then the primary feathers are going to sit at the bottom. So you see like this guy, they're going to go from the top edge of where this comes down, right? You see it all fits together. Um, you see the top line there, and that's gonna turn into, let me move this down a little bit. That's gonna turn into these longer pointed feathers for the rest of his body. And you'll notice they'll start coming inward like that. And then they'll start coming in and back because it's gonna go over top of the tail area. So if I were to do that and then bring it up and have another feather kind of close it off, that'll work for me. I'm okay with that. So we'll leave it like that for now. I think that'll be okay. Um, actually, no, I changed my mind. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna change that up a little bit. feel very indecisive today about this, but yeah, that'll do. So you can see how those long feathers come in at the bottom, and then you'll see that there's some larger feathers here, go over top of each other again, and then this is going to be the edge of the tail. So I'm going to actually bring these feathers in that way, because that's more than likely where other feathers are going to come from. And then this part, you can even bring it down a little bit more if you want it to show more of the tail. I'm going to do that because I kind of like how that looks a little better. And then you can see this is where all those larger tail feathers are going to be because that's where his tail is. And he's going to use that to fly. Lots of times, though, tail feathers are going to be fairly close to each other. So I'm just going to give it a couple extra little bits. And then all you have to do is give him kind of a perch. So I'm gonna work it about here where these are, make it seem like he's kind of crouching in, maybe about there. And I'm gonna just give him a little post to sit on. And it could be a tree, it could be whatever you want, but I just give him something to sit on so it doesn't look like he's kind of just floating in the air there, right? He could be sitting on a stump, he could sit wherever you want. Yeah, so that should be good. And then you've got a nice little owl that you can show people. If you're feeling a little extra, you can even start adding more feathers if you want. You can make a little more detail. There, there's so many other things that you can do. And so really cool that we can get to that point. So that's our barn owls. How's everybody doing with that so far? So you can even see from our original drawing, we took it a little further, made them a little darker, added some harsher lines to it. And regardless of which one you like best, we've got two great little owls sitting there. The next one, I'll give you guys a little, little time, by the way, I'm not going to just skip right into it, but our next guy is going to be this guy. Just because I figured two different types of owls, just like we've done different types of bears, different types, you know, foxes, things like that. We're going to have a little bit of, um, extra and make sure that you guys kind of get a little more than one owl in today. I think, yeah, we're exactly kind of at 4.30 now, so it's kind of a good time to give you guys a few minutes and then we can move right on into the other guy. So yeah, like I said, I'll give you guys a few minutes and if you have any questions, just give me a shout, let me know, and I can try and help you out.
And you can draw a moon behind it if you wanted to, make it kind of fancy. All right, so I'm assuming everybody will be okay in another minute or so. So I'm just going to get a different page so I can draw this other guy. But I'll make sure that other one will be sitting up the front for you so you can see. It. All right, so this is our next guy. He makes me kind of happy because he is grumpy looking. Um, I did his eyes a little weird, but I'm okay with it. I like it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just put it over top of this one for now. I will put them both on the table at the end of the, the session so that you guys can kind of take a look at it, see if there's anything else you want to do with it or if there's anything you think you've missed. But right now I'm going to start working on this guy. So same thing, he's kind of like an upside down teardrop with a very kind of flat head. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that same shape. So for him, I always kind of draw the circle because it kind of keeps me grounded on where the rest of the head's supposed to be. And so I'm gonna just draw the circle just like that. If you want, you can draw the line through it. If you're feeling like you wanna know where center is, where you're kind of going with eyes. If you feel like you don't, have the you know you don't want to kind of draw the eyes a little wonky or anything you can always draw a line through it also these will give you ideas on where in his body those eyes and the nose is going to be kind of set um, same with the ears you can always work with that just a little bit after so what i'm going to do is i'm going to work and i'm going to use this outer line as this um, part of the owl. I'm not going to work outside of it because I've already kind of given myself the parameters on where I can place these things. So I'm going to put that down and kind of give it a little angle outwards, but kind of give it that little kind of bend to that line, right? Nothing huge, just enough to give it the idea of what we're kind of kind of trying to do. Because if you look at this shape here, it kind of goes here, gets a little flat, and then comes back down. So if we're looking at it, we're going to go here, gets a little flat, comes back down. Perfect. Then I'm going to look, and I'm going to just draw that kind of cocoon, upside down, teardrop shape. Right? So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We are dealing with nature here. So perfect is not even sometime <laughs> and I'm good with that all right so that's what we've got so far you can see it's not perfect which I'm not expecting it to be I just want that ability to know where my next piece is going to be anytime I'm drawing I think of it as little puzzle pieces going in all at different times so each step you take is a new puzzle piece and you get to figure out how big and how small 
and where it goes before you think it's right or before you're looking at your reference and before you decide if you've got that um, quite accurately or not or if you're deciding to make something that's not quite the same as the photo this is where you get to really kind of play around right because you have all this imagination you can use for this and all the time in the world when you're sitting down giving yourself the time to draw so with this guy i see that his shoulders come out a bit so i'm going to start there and on the other side try and keep it even so close to the bottom of that circle and do that and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go straight down for well not straight down kind of inward and then bow it in like that and then i'm gonna do that with the other side but the other side's a little more straight i guess you would say so i'm just gonna bring it down to about there i'm not gonna finish that quite yet because i'm gonna go in here and I'm going to see where this line is. I'm going to use this line for that. So I'm going to erase the top. And you'll see that that line is going to be this part. So if I'd drawn it lighter, this would have been easier. But I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to just scribble it down a bit. Almost like there's some sort of feathering there. And once it gets to about there on the way down from your wing, you're going to want to just angle it in like it's a, a bunch of feathers there. I'm going to do that on the inside here and then just bring it down a little bit more because this tail is going to have to be elongated in the end, right? Because this part's going to be where the bar is. So you notice he's got feathers coming over here, which are all the fluffy feathers under by their talons where he's hiding his feet. So that's another part that I really like about this image is because I don't have to draw the feet. And for some reason, I don't, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> drawing the talons sometimes because it can be a bit of a tedious process um, and they're, they're more difficult than they seem sometimes so we're going to just leave that out today but maybe another time we'll go through things like that but yeah so I'm going to just kind of work I use the U shape a lot when I'm kind of doing these or half U shapes just so I can get the idea of how this is going to work I pay attention to to the angle of these feathers and where those angles hit and where they don't because they're not all the same right like this one's got a more kind of stubby look and this one's a little thinner but it bows out a tiny bit and then there's kind of just a little bit of fluff so i'm going to just fiddle that in there and then i'm going to start erasing this line because we don't need it anymore so we've got this so far it kind of looks um <laughs> Almost like some sort of bug in a ghost costume, but we'll work through it. Um, and then when we work with this part, I'm going to draw another circle inside here. Or maybe an oval shape, actually. And I'm going to kind of start on the outsides like that. So if you're using, like, brackets when you're writing, think of those as brackets. Um, you can draw the entire oval-esque shape if you like. It will give you a, a, a hand with this sometimes but the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to draw two lines going inwards like this from each side try and make it as even as you can um, mine's not even that even either not even that even um but yeah so i'm going to just put those into the center line like that it should come around about to half the way down that circle just a little bit before maybe and then this is where i'm going to start just kind of putting and flicking out those almost like they're bug antenna right or if you think of, you know, the samurai um, horn pieces that are on the helmets, that's another way you can kind of think of it. I like to think bug antenna because I think of, um, what do you call them? Um, yeah, I lost, a, you know, ants. We'll go with ants. <laughs> but yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this ledge here on the top. And then I'm going to just attach them like that. We can fix them to the way we want them after, but that's a good way to kind of give yourself the idea of where those horns are going to be. And then I'm just going to kind of feather it down a little bit into this kind of corner spot. And then we're starting off with our ears. So the reason I think this is super helpful to kind of go down drawings this way, yo. <laughs> um, 
is that it's way easier to break things down into portions and sections before you get into um, the full detail of things. I know it can be really hard, especially it's like me and math. If I look at a math question, I'm like, oh no, because I, I have trouble breaking things down and working with them in simple ways. And I look at the full thing and go, how do I do this? Um, and for some people, it's the same with drawing or artwork, because you look at the thing and you don't know where to start and you don't know where to kind of work out all the details and all the the the, or the, the basic parts of it, right? Um, so that's what I'm kind of just trying to work through and help with. So that being said, the nice part about where this part goes is that's going to be just above the eyes. So if you want to start and draw your eye, you can do that. I'm going to draw it a little larger because it's not going to be completely round again. Remember, it's going to look really weird to start. And then we're going to work it into what is a little more manageable and what looks a little more owly. But I'm going to do that one and then I'm going to do the eye on the other side. Notice too, when you're drawing your eyes and things like that, where the eyes are in reference to each other. So if you're looking at the space here, you're probably gonna have the equal space from here to here. And that's where you're gonna draw your next eye, right? So this space on this side should be just as equal to that. And again, you can use your pencil to reference the size of where the middle line is to the eye. So if I'm looking there and it's just at about that ridge, I can do that right over here. And then I can even measure the width of the eye so that when I draw it, it doesn't have to be too off from what it is. The reason we have this line here is that you can see, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see where that line is gonna meet on the bottom of the eye and the top of the eye. So you can even out where exactly the eyes are supposed to be and they won't look kind of lopsided. Um, maybe the well, if your line's not straight, Mine's possibly not because it's not quite as close as I'd thought to the other bit, which is fine because I'm going to erase it. So we don't quite need that anymore either. So I'm going to go ahead and erase those lines as much as humanly possible. And I'm going to start erasing this big circle. And I'm actually going to kind of get rid of some other things. Before I get rid of this line though, let me just double check that these are in a good spot. They're good enough for me. I am also going to figure out where this nose is. So if you look at the center part of your eye, much like in this one, you can see that the top of this beak is just coming up to where that eyelid is. So the center of the eye, go down a little bit, and move that line to where that beak's gonna be. And the best thing about this beak is my way of doing it is I would kind of just draw rounded shapes on each side and bring it down. And you can see to that point that you're getting yourself a nice little owl beak. They tend to be quite sharp, so I just um, point it as much as possible at the bottom. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just, we're just learning how to do these guys, right? So. And they kind of taper off into a, a bit more of a rounded point at the top. But this is also these dark areas that I'm going to kind of just scritch in here. I'm going to flick all those little lines in there because that's where all that those feathers are going to kind of poof in over the over that beak. And then I'm going to just shade the very tip of it a little bit and give it a little little more of a a presence, I guess you could say. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw more circles inside my eyes. Owls have a very big pupil area. And again, we're going to draw a spot where we're going to see the light in the eyes. So I'm going to just leave the light in the eyes at the top like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. And remember to watch where those shadowing parts are for the eyes. And I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just scribbling in there. And you can kind of see 
how those eyes start turning into a little more than just something simple, right? So I'm going to work with that, and then I'm going to look a little closer. And as you can see, there's some lines in the eyes there. So we're going to look here. This part looks a little grumpy to me, right? You can see by the eyes, he's got some feathering around there. So I'm going to just kind of do a little bit around the eyes, get rid of that kind of shocked look, I guess. And I'm going to make him look a little more angry, so I'm going to put some feathers coming over the eyes like this. Because all right in here is going to push down against each other, because that's that headpiece, right? So I'm going to do the same thing around this one, make him look a little less happy. <laughs> Although there are some owls that look absolutely adorable, and they're super happy, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, so... We're kind of working like that. And you can kind of see it's given itself its shape, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I always say that. I know. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to look at these lines now. And you notice with this guy that they're darker around the edges, and then they kind of disappear a bit in some areas. And that's because this is going to be that dark part around those eyes. This part's going to be fairly rounded, so I'm going to just erase this a bit. You can still see it because there's lines from the, the previous bit of graphite I just laid down there, but that's okay. I'm going to make it kind of scribbly, too, because it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be feathers there. There's going to be, you know, popping out this way. All those darker colors, stripes on these sorts of owls helps them blend into trees, um, things that are in their surroundings. So I'm going to do that, um, and then I'm going to kind of work through this bottom part, but it kind of goes flat, right? Because all those feathers are going to go across and then over. This guy's looking a lot cuter than my other one. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to work that way, and then just kind of give myself a little bit of time to work all of these out. Sometimes this will go around. There will be feathers that come up and go in the face. And usually I do like a line underneath here and then a line just reaching down, kind of giving it that idea. And then I'm going to work on this part, which is kind of like an upside down triangle. And with that, I'm going to just move this over a bit, do something like that. They don't always have to be the same, like I said. They're not a, all your drawings are going to come out exactly the same way. And I'd be pretty impressed if they all came out exactly the same way, because mine never do. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to just start scribbling in some little details, make that in the shape of kind of a triangle, and it starts giving that facial shape. I'm going to work with this part, and I'm going to actually take away a little bit more of that roundness. And I'm going to give him a little more of a harder shape to him. Right? And as you can see, it's slowly starting to get there. And because I'm always concerned with our owls floating away, I'm going to just make that pole that he's sitting on. Remember those feathers here are covering his feet and that's why in the image we're going to draw it like that. And that gives us an ability also though to start drawing in everything else. So with these types of owls you can also a lot of like stripiness to them so I just kind of add some little extra stripes around the side here let it cascade down to these bigger feathers and then just have little bits here and there cascading all up towards the rest of the body. Because less is more, we're not going to get crazy on feathers here. We're just going to give some little areas some attention. And so this is going to be other feathers coming in. And um, if you guys want to re-watch this, it will always be up on our page after the actual session where you can go back, redraw, try again, um, or just do it for fun, show anybody else if you want. You can make comments, you can add pictures of what you've drawn onto that so that other people can see what you've done, which is kind of one of my favorite things to see. 
Um, I know quite a few of you will send me photos of your drawings after, and they're, they're awesome. So please keep doing that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get rid of this line, actually, also, which I forgot about. <laughs> um, and you can see, too, with this part, we can kind of bring it out a little more. We can make it a little fancier. I'm going to make it a little more scribbly again, so it's going back into making this guy a little more of his own thing. And I'm going to bring it up and kind of twist this top part here because this part is going to be darker, right? This is the darker side of those ears. And so I'm going to just scribble that in. And then it's the same for the other ones. So you'll see that. We can get rid of the lines in between. And then you can see that we can put this there and then scribble in those darker parts again. So we've kind of got this great little owl starting. Um, you can make them look a little more grumpy or, or a little less um, cutesy that mine seems to come out of, which I kind of like them that way, so I'm continuing with that. But you can always work on making them a little scarier looking. You can get a, a wider dip to the eyes. You can kind of change the shape of the eyes or where those pupils are. So if I were to make the eyes a little bigger and change the pupils to be a little higher up on the eye and not fully round in the eye, you can see that it changes the way that he's looking, right? He actually looks a little bit less like he's going to hug you and a little more like he's kind of watching you. That's the same as this guy. Like you notice his eyes are kind of underneath a little bit, which I was actually going to do a little bit more because I want him to look a little less, you know, like he's surprised. <laughs> but this guy, we're going to leave him like that because I kind of like it. And then up here, you can just start playing with where those feathers are going to come in. Um, you can even go and look at other owl pictures and try and draw those and keep the kind of same sort of ideas that you have with these ones, like the upside down tear shape, if you're doing seated owls, um, if you're doing owls taking flight, it's it's a little bit more of a, a task, but it's still kind of fun. But yeah, this is where you can start to kind of play with everything that he's about. You can change the angle of his head, you can make it a little more pointy, you can make his beak a little different. You can start coloring in some areas that you think he would be darker on. Maybe I kind of like that area. I like to scribble, so I mean, that's what makes me kind of happy about drawing these guys. Um, if you're looking to actually draw something that's a little more realistic, then you kind of want to start with more shapes and you definitely not be scribbling like I am. Um, but this works. Oh, no, don't be sorry you're late. You're always welcome to come in whenever you like. Thanks for coming. <laughs> but yeah, so this is where you go with that. And then you just kind of look at if you like that that's as round as it is, or if you don't, you can kind of straighten it out a bit. I'm going to straighten it out a bit because I'm trying to make him look a little less funky. So the last thing we have here is the bottom of the tail. And then, yeah, you can start drawing feathers. So I've got kind of three tiers here. I've got the little bits here with this one. So that's my first one. And then I've got my second piece, which flattens out again like that. And then my third piece kind of goes in and then goes down. So it's almost like the first one, but a little more relaxed. So I'm gonna do that, go down, make it flat again, and then go back up. And there you have it. You got yourself a cool little owl. Again, like I said, you don't have to make it look as kind of cutesy as mine does. Um, you can always do something a little more magical and wispy, like the barn owl. But that's all we've got for today on our owls. So I'll just leave these guys up for you so you can take a look at these. And if you've got any questions, just, you know, speak up, let me know. <laughs> um, and yeah, just if you have any questions, for sure. Um, if you're just coming in and you have questions about how you start, I can always go back over that. Or you can go back and watch the video again. 
Um, I do notice we have about 10 minutes left until the, the show is the show. Um, so this show's over um, until the session's over. But um, the next one I'm going to have on our uh, website and it's going to be another kind of voting poll to see. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for coming. Um, but yeah, so the next one is going to be either, what's my page say? I wrote it down. Not on that one, apparently. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So the next one that we can work on is um, the first one I was thinking of that can be a choice is lemurs. I think weavers are really cool. They've got the hand, excuse me, they've got the long ringed tails and they've got those really cute faces. So that, that would be a really good option to learn to draw. I know some people would be interested in that one. Um, also, there, you know, people really fell in love with them after the Madagascar movie, uh, King Julian. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in drawing lemurs, definitely go to the page and vote for the one you want. Um, they notify me so I can see which one's kind of winning in the votes um, and then I can start drawing up our next class. Um, the class after this um, on the Sunday after the next one will be watercolors again. So if you are interested in painting watercolor, definitely go to that one. It's another free class. Um, I will be starting to set up more intermediate classes um, if you're interested in signing up for those. Lemurs would be great. Oh yeah, I think so. I think they're pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so there's lemurs and then we've got hummingbirds. And I know that I keep going on to birds, but there's just so many different kinds. So I figured I'd give you guys a choice. Um, you're always welcome to message me too. If you're interested in something else that I haven't mentioned yet, always happy to hear what you guys want to draw. But yeah, uh, lemurs and hummingbirds. I'm always a bird person. So there'll probably always be some form of bird that I would be willing to draw. Um, Especially when there's so many cool kinds. There's harpy eagles, which are really funky looking. They're also um, around Panama area a lot of the time. Then there's, um, oh, there's so many. There's a whole bunch of different birds of prey. I've already done a series on birds of prey. Um, if you want to see any more of those images, just let me know. I can show those to you. But yeah, there's so many. Um, and owls are just cool. They, um... I actually found out recently that they don't make their own nests. They steal them a lot of the time. And a lot of the time they steal them from crows. And that's why sometimes you find baby owls on the ground is crows have flung them out of the nests, which is kind of sad. <laughs> um, yeah, right? I like both. But you know what? Um, if you guys are trying to pick one, please definitely go vote so I know how many people want to do one or the other. I will bring up other ones again to to pit against other types of animals or floral things or landscapes even. Um, and I will be starting up more classes um, that people can sign up for if they're interested in, in more of a two hour session. Um, I know during COVID it's kind of hard because you can have limited groups. So I will be limiting um, our group numbers in those classes to um, work with whatever restrictions there are for that. Um, but I'm hoping to get those set up too. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one classes, let me know for sure. Thank you so much, Pamela. Thank you, Candice. You guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, so let me know and we can figure out how that works. I still have five minutes, so I'm going to shut up and let you guys kind of draw or ask any questions. Um, if you look in the link on our Facebook page, then you can see the website there, or you can just look at shayairsart.com. And yeah, um, I'm also going to have the watercolor one set up um, in the next little bit. So you'll see that on my page too, but yes, now I'm gonna shut up. And if you have any questions, I will then speak. <laughs> Oh, and if you feel inclined to, um, to if you haven't already, like and share um, my page. I'm trying to get as many people to follow as possible that I can help 
reach other people and help them find passion in the arts. So if you do notice, you can share your pages with your entire friend group or people you think would be interested. Please definitely share and like. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, I love charcoals. I also love um, chalk pastel, which kind of reminds me a bit of charcoal. Um, but you can also get other blending tools to do it. But I'm a messy person and I tend to really love kind of touching things. You'll notice I will always have some form of paint or color on me from any type of medium I've been using because I'm messy. And best thing to use is your fingers when you're blending stuff to me still. <laughs> Um, you can also use blending stumps, too, with charcoal if you're interested. Um, they're not just for graphite use sometimes. Um, and there's also little rags, too, that you can use to even get rid of a little bit of your charcoals if you put too much on. Um, but, yeah, I, I use my fingers a lot when I'm shading and, and messing around. <laughs> Yes, yes, it does. It's, it, you know, especially with charcoals, and you can get the nice, um, really gentle sort of um, shading going around in your pictures. You can get some really great depth with that, um, and you can really build a beautiful image when you're using that sort of movement. I think also with your fingers, you're just closer to your image, and you, like, sometimes have a lot more control, right, because you, you just know where your fingers are going to be. With a brush or, or even, you know, a stump of some sort to, to shade it. Sometimes I find for me anyways, that little extension, you have to kind of work yourself around knowing how to use that a little more than, you know, you're already used to this, right? You can feel it. You feel if you need more or if you've got too much there, right? Do you use pan pastels also, or do you just mainly work in charcoal? Or do you use pastels at all, actually, is my question. <laughs> I didn't even realize it's already five o'clock. So um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for you guys. If you want to watch this again, like I said, it's always on our Facebook page. Um, if you have any questions, you want to continue or chat or have, you know, comments, definitely inbox my Facebook page or send me a message. You know, you can interact with our Facebook or not our Facebook, well, our website. Um, and you can also, you know, comment on any of our posts um, I'm more than happy to comment back yeah yeah thank you and thank you for answering my question um, I would like to get more into charcoal it's been a long time <laughs> you're so funny um, <laughs> but yeah um, it has been a hoot thank you all and I'll see you guys next time on we'll find out if it's lemurs or hummingbirds <laughs>